This is Mac OS Ken. A tale of woe for Apple Vision Pro. A report says Goldman Sachs wants out of Apple Card. And Apple invites SCOTUS to the Fortnite fight. It is Wednesday, the 5th of July, 2023. I'm Ken Ray, and this is news from Mac OS Ken. Brought to you by yours truly and sponsored by HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. Go to HelloFresh.com slash MOK50 and use code MOK50 for 50% off plus free shipping. This show is also supported by people like you, patrons through Patreon. Find out more and add your support at patreon.com slash macOSCan. On Monday, while you were preparing for your 4th of July festivities, the Financial Times was hitting the world with bad tidings around Apple's head-mounted computer. According to the report, Apple has been forced to make drastic cuts to production forecasts for the Mixed Reality Vision Pro headset, unveiled last month after seven years in development and hailed as its most significant product launch since the iPhone. Secret people said to know something about something say not only is Apple Vision Pro too complex to meet internal targets, Apple has also had to push back plans for a less expensive follow-on device. Some of the secret peeps are said to be in the supply chain. They say Luxshare, one of Apple's suppliers for Vision Pro, maybe it's one and only supplier, is preparing to make fewer than 400,000 for 2024. Separately, the piece says, two China-based sole suppliers of certain components for the Vision Pro said Apple was only asking them for enough for 130 to 150,000 units in the first year. Should we do the Tim Cook quote? Let's do the Tim Cook quote. Ten and a half years ago, Apple CEO Tim Cook said of supply chain rumors, I'd stress that even if a particular data point were factual, it would be impossible to interpret for our overall business. Yields can vary. Supplier performance can vary. There's an inordinately long list of things that would make any single data point not a great proxy for what's going on. Then again, these are secret people who say they know something about something, so... I'm not saying the Financial Times piece is wrong. I don't know. I will say, I don't think the Financial Times knows. Not for certain. I don't think it can. Surprising the planet, neither Apple nor Luxshare offered comment for the report. Speaking of uncertainty, the Wall Street Journal says Goldman Sachs is looking for a way out of its Apple Card deal. Apple Card is Goldman's highest profile push into consumer financial products. While the journal says the bank recently extended its Apple partnership through the end of the decade, backing the Cupertino company's Buy Now, Pay Later program and launching consumer accounts with Apple Card high yield savings, it kind of wants to be done with individual consumers. Late last year, the journal says the bank went public with plans to scale back its consumer business. Now it's said to want to say never mind on the Apple consumer stuff. Secret people said to know something about something indicate that Goldman is in talks with American Express to take over its Apple credit card and other ventures with the tech giant. The journal secret so-and-so say Apple's aware of the Goldman Amex talks, a deal between the two financial institutions is neither imminent nor assured, and one more potential spanner in the works, a deal to transfer the products from Goldman to Amex would have to meet with Apple's approval. Wasn't that long ago the bank was painting a rosy picture of its dealings with Apple. Asked about the Apple-Goldman relationship last October, Goldman Sachs CEO David D. Saul Solomon said it was a very, very strong partnership where there's a lot of opportunity. Still, it is hard to blame the firm for wanting to get out of consumer banking. Goldman Sachs started 2023 by saying it had lost roughly $3 billion since 2020 tied to its consumer lending push. That's not just Apple Card. Other products include its self-started Marcus High Yield Savings Account, a credit card with General Motors, and home improvement lender Green Sky, purchased by Goldman just last year. 
More news in a moment. But first, a word from HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit and sponsor of today's show. Meal planning is an interesting thing. Coming up with new and tasty ideas, figuring out all of the ingredients. Yeah, for me, that often ends with simply making the same things over and over again. It doesn't have to with HelloFresh. They take care of the meal planning and deliver everything you need, from ingredients to step-by-step instructions, all right to your door. I've told you before about some great meals I've had with HelloFresh. The tilapia with scallion sriracha pesto, the brown sugar bourbon pork chops, the goat cheese chicken with figgy balsamic. They were all delicious, but HelloFresh does more than just meals. You can add snacks, sides, and more from the HelloFresh market. That's over 100 items to pad out your pantry. Fresh, delicious, and it couldn't be more convenient. See what HelloFresh has for you. Go to HelloFresh.com slash MOK50 and use code MOK50 for 50% off plus free shipping. That's HelloFresh.com slash MOK50 and code MOK50 for free shipping plus 50% off. Taste what's made HelloFresh America's number one meal kit. Use code MOK50 for 50% off plus free shipping at HelloFresh.com slash MOK50. Good news, iPhone users. You can keep using 5G for the foreseeable future. Mac Rumors says Apple and Nokia have signed a long-term patent licensing agreement that will give Apple access to patented Nokia inventions in 5G and other technologies. Exact terms of the deal have not been disclosed, though it will see Apple paying Nokia for the use of its tech. The piece says Nokia owns more than 20,000 patents, including 5,500 patents that are related to 5G technology. The new deal replaces a licensing agreement between the two companies that had been set to expire this year. Nokia's press release on the new deal does not say how long it lasts, just that Nokia will receive payments from Apple for a multi-year period, and that the terms of the agreement remain confidential between the parties. Apple is trying to take its Fortnite fight to the highest court in the land. Apple Insider ran a piece Monday saying the Cupertino company has asked the U.S. Supreme Court to reconsider the most recent rulings in its seemingly endless fight with Epic Games. The part that bums Apple out is the one where lower courts ruled against Apple's anti-steering policies. Judge Yvonne Gonzalez-Rogers and the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals after her basically said that Apple should allow developers to say other payment methods are possible on an app's page or description inside Apple's app stores. No word yet on Epic filing for a hearing of its own. And finally today, I don't know whether the weather in Australia is better, but Apple's weather app is. iLounge says the app can now tell users down under whether it's going to rain in the next hour. According to the piece, the Apple support document says that its next hour precipitation notifications and forecasts are available in Australia, as well as the U.S., the U.K., and Ireland, with the data provided by their respective national weather services. Apple says such forecasts are down-to-the-minute and hyper-local, words that might sound familiar iLounge says the next hour precipitation forecasts have been live for users in the States since 2020. Short show, I know, but we're coming off a holiday. Let's see what happens tomorrow. Tomorrow. Mac OS Ken, brought to you by me and sponsored by HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. Go to HelloFresh.com slash MOK50 and use code MOK50 for 50% off plus free shipping. This show is also supported by people like you, patrons through Patreon. 
Find out more and add your support at patreon.com slash macOSCan. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media. Online at backbeatmedia.com. You can reach me a couple of ways. Info at macOSCan.com or call 716-780-4080. Until next time, that is news from macOS Ken. I'm Ken Ray. Ciao.